Hey everyone, this is Chris. Welcome back to the channel. We're talking about uh, the lockdowns and the protests in China. I just want to jump right in. This is actually a really big story. Um, you can read the headlines here. China COVID unrest boils over as citizens defy lockdown efforts. And um, if you've been following all along, you know that many countries are actually basically uh, out of COVID lockdowns and you know out of COVID restrictions, whereas in China, actually the uh, infections keep getting worse and the government has actually been locking down buildings and uh, restricting movement of people. Um, in fact, uh, there was a fire in a building, an apartment building, um, and this is a picture of it there. And um, the basic gist of it that's been sort of flying around uh, social media is that the, the building was difficult to, uh, to, for the firefighters to get inside, right? So um, we don't know all the exact details because it's, you know, things can get out of hand. So I don't want to just like say definitively what, you know, what the barriers were, but I'll just say that um, it was difficult. And uh, 10 people died in the situation and sort of what's going on right now in the country is people feel like that these lockdowns are um, detrimental to their own safety and health. And this is sort of where it really um, hits home for many people. They, they're just getting extremely irritated with this, which I totally understand. And um, I, I personally didn't realize it would get to be this big in terms of um, massive uh, protesting. Um, the, usually in China, you do not do these kind of things. The main reason is because um, you can be reported, essentially, and it could be, have a serious detrimental to your career, to your life. Um, the freedom of speech from expression is, is not a normal thing in, in China, especially when you're criticizing the government, basically saying, hey, you're locking us down and you just, you know, cost people their lives because people could, the firefighters couldn't get to them. Um, and one of the things that, that I want to mention when you see like a picture like this where people are you know, mourning the people in the apartment building is um, when I used to teach at Tsinghua University, and I mention this all the time because it, it, it is a important to understand that this is the top university in the country. And um, both the current president and the foreign president went to school there. And many of these students um, essentially, you know, uh, are gonna end up ruling the, the country. And at that time, when I was there, this would have been back in around 2007, 2008, um, there was a earthquake and um, I think it was like a school collapse and there was a lot of students that, that died. And it was interesting because in the um, Western media at the time, uh, they were reporting that, you know, there's faulty construction and, and these kind of things. And those kind of things would just not be reported in, in China. The regular people, of course, um, you know, do care about school children and do care about just regular people. And this is something that I don't know if we would do it in America, but I'm just sharing with what they did in China. They did a, like a moment of silence. And the way that it worked was like, Everybody was silent, and I mean everybody. And um, in fact, there were reports that cars would, would just be stopping in the middle of the freeway uh, and just would get outside their car and stand in a moment of silence for like two minutes. That's why I was saying, I don't know if Americans are supposed to do that. Like we certainly have moments of silence, but the idea I want you to understand is that um, if this sort of thing becomes well known about the story of the people in the apartment building and everyone's like, oh my God, I identify with that. And I feel for my brothers and sisters, right, in, in my in my nation, in my in my country, um, this can actually become a really really big problem for the for the Chinese government as more and more people start calling for essentially like she to step down, more freedom of expression. Um, I, I have noticed, and, and this is just unreal. Um, you know, students um, at Tsinghua, where I used to teach, and also at Beidou or or uh, Peking University, another way you call it. Um, and again, this is essentially what it is. It's equivalent to Harvard and MIT in, in China. Um, they are coming out and saying, you know, rule of law, uh, democracy, these kind of things. And, you know, they, I was looking at this. This is sort of like, this is campus over at Tsinghua. There is a, um, essentially a security guard doesn't want people to take photos. Um, but uh, some photos are getting out because in, in, you know, this day and age, everybody has a camera and everybody has, you know, capability of taking a photo. I mean, everyone's got their photos out. And kind of what the, this is at Tsinghua, I think, and um, kind of what's going on is, is um, for their protest, they're just holding a blank sheets of paper, um, which basically kind of mean that we're being silenced. And uh, the, I mean, the students are shouting democracy and freedom. It's, I, I, you know, right now I have, I'm composed right now, but you know, for the last hour or so, I was just reading through this stuff. I, I'm just telling you guys, that I've, I've been in tears. It's just, it's um, the best way to describe it is, you know, just think about when, in, in your life, you know, wherever you live now, and you think about like, if you saw a bunch of people and say, in, in your hometown or, or a school that you went to or a place you used to work and, and you see people that, that you feel like that you would know and, and they're going through this kind of thing and you just want to support them, right? And that's the best way to describe it. So, you know, for me, when I see these images, I'm just expressing with you guys how I feel. I'm just like, oh my God, these are like 
my students essentially people you know that age and, and this sort of thing and, and they're out you know shouting for democracy shouting for, for freedom really and and it's it's really really inspiring to see and um i i hope sincerely hope there is there is change in, in china um it is just a better world if, if we can have that now at the time and i'm trying to explain this to you guys it, it sort of you know why say isn't there freedom or democracy in a place like china it's a complicated issue and at the at the time when i was at Tsinghua, the 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 this is leading up to the um beijing olympics the economy was going good and people were making money there was a lot of hope and stuff like that and so you kind of ignore um uh, say the lack of human rights essentially is the best way to describe it um as you know the this lockdowns in china continue on the economy starts to slow and then now you see people in the apartment fire um essentially get killed due to government policy which certainly could be the case uh, like i said i can't verify exactly what the situation was but it, it certainly looks like from social media that like i said the fire trucks couldn't get inside the buildings because of essentially the, the policy of the government to lock down buildings and um you know, I, I think there could actually be a real change this time. Um, there, there's one thing that uh, you may or may not know about China, that there's always sort of this under the surface, how can I say, um, I guess you could call it resentment or anger among lower classes uh, towards the system. And, and the way the, the way that, that when I was at Tsinghua, the way the students would talk, and remember, these are people who benefit from the system, meaning that they were able to reach the highest levels. They always say, well, you know, the country is developing and we can't have everyone complaining because there'd be too many complaining voices and we all need to go in the same direction and do the same thing. But in that system, right, not everyone benefits from it. And so when, when we see, like, say, the system is clearly hurting people like with the apartment fire, um, it, it sort of amplifies the voices of people who are dissenting. And this is something I just want to emphasize with you guys. There's always been dissent in China. There's always been people who are upset with the system. Um, but usually it can be, how can I say, like it can be quelled or silenced, right? Because you can delete stuff from, from um, you know, all your Twitters and Facebooks and this kind of thing. And, and the government can try to suppress as much as it can. But in this day and age, and, and I'm just kind of just running through different photos with you guys, uh, it is a very different world, right? Everyone has a camera now and it, it is it is hard to limit people's freedom of expression. I, I, I was looking at this as well. Like this is a, a picture of... Um, I guess people are even putting up like banners on bridges, you know, calling for democracy and, and these kind of things. Like you just don't see this kind of stuff in China. And it's, it's really, because it's really difficult to explain for people who haven't uh, been there, how, the, how there's certain lack of freedoms. Um, and, and I think the best way to, to, to think about it is, um, and, and, I, and I get it guys, in, in USA, people complain about freedom of speech on Twitter and stuff like that. And I always laugh because like true censorship, you, you have no idea. Just for example, if, if you want to run out in the street like right today in the USA, and you say, I hate Joe Biden, I absolutely hate Joe Biden, I'm not going to vote for him, I hate him. People are like, okay, great. <laughs> like that's your totally your opinion, and you can run around and say that all that you want, right? No one, no one's going to stop you from saying that. Um, where, where, where I'm just telling you in a place like China, I can't just run around and say, I hate President Xi, I hate President Xi. But in this day and age, um, like I said, normally you can't do that, but like there's just so many people doing these kind of things right now, and this has just been the last couple of days, and I, I think what ends up happening is you get more and more people who uh, aren't afraid anymore. And, and the numbers become so big, right? Where you have like, it's not like the police can arrest the whole university if, if everyone's doing it. Now, there's still going to be people that um, are, are afraid, right? They don't see any reason that they'll, the kind of the thinking is, is like, why should I protest? It's not going to change anything. And you'll hear people say that kind of stuff. Um, like, uh, for example, when I was in class, I used to teach peop uh, students kind of basically, you know, what's the point of freedom of speech? What's the point of democracy? You know, these essentially how the American system works. And um, sometimes students would say, well, why should we even talk about this? We can't change anything anyway. And, and that kind of thinking, right? Just think about that. It's kind of like people and they have this in USA as well. They say, well, why should I vote for politics anyway? Why should I vote for either politician? I don't like either. My, why should I vote? I, we can't change anything anyway, right? So I don't, I don't want you to think that that sort of thinking of a passive thinking in China doesn't exist in USA. It does, right? You, you guys probably know people that say, well, why? I don't need to vote. We can't change anything anyway. But I completely reject that kind of thing. I, I just completely reject that. And I always talk to my students, this is, you know, years ago, about the reason why we talk about these things and sort of why I even do things on, on YouTube is it's good to understand the world and understand, yes, you, you do have a choice. And yes, you can tell your friends about, you know, choices and these sort of things. And, and yes, you have a right, in my opinion, to think whatever, think whatever you want. You have a right to, right? 
And um, I, I just think this is something that is very, very difficult for governments to do forever it is to hold down human expression, human thought, right? This sort of stuff. And, and uh, I, I just think um, that we could actually see some real change in China. I, I think there is a possibility. And the, the, the reason why the, um, you know, why now, um, you know, you lock down people for so long and, and the, people have TVs and the internet these days, they can see other countries are open. They can literally see the World Cup and be like, look what all these people free. Like, why aren't we free, right? And um, it, it reminds me, and this is, I wanna make this very, very clear. This is a Korean movie. This is a Korean movie. This is not a Chinese movie. This is a Korean movie. Uh, mostly because the, the 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 similar revolution hasn't happened in China. That's why there is no equivalent movie, right? There's still essentially no freedom of speech in, in China. Um, whereas you look at this movie, this is a Korean movie. I want to emphasize that over and over again. Um, I, I recommend watching this one. It's, it's called 1987, When the Day Comes. And this is uh, really about sort of how uh, Korean revolution started based on um, what happened to a student, uh, right? A student died. I don't want to tell you the whole story, but it's very similar to say like in, in China it's happening where people in an apartment, you know, die and it's sort of how it inspires everyone to rise up and say, oh my God, you know, this has got to be such a bad thing that, that you know, people are getting killed over this. And it's very similar to uh, events that happen in USA. You know, people tolerate, I mean, they don't like things, but they, they kind of tolerate the way things are until you know, just unfortunately how it happens, someone gets killed and people are like, oh my God, we got to change something about our, our society. And I just feel like that's sort of what's going on in China. So um, I recommend this movie for uh, the Korean one, just because it just captures sort of like how a regular person, you know, you sitting at home or, or you know, someone, uh, whatever country that you're in, and, and you kind of see stuff on TV and you're kind of passive about it. You're like, well, that's just the way that it is. It'll change. It'll go away soon, right? Things will get better. And then when someone gets killed and you start to feel like, wow, that could be me. And this is just how people behave that, well, that could be me. This isn't right. I don't, I want to protect me, my family, my children. Uh, you know, it, it's, it, it's a very, very complicated issue because, it, it, you know, why are some countries have democracy and freedom and why some countries don't? It's a very, very complicated issue. Um, but I just want to just, like I said, point out this movie because I think it really gives a good inside look of sort of the choices that people make and how these sort of things happen. Um, and I think that, you know, whether or not we see massive change in China because of this fire, you know, I can't predict the future 100%. But this seems like that kind of event to where it's really rallying citizens to come to that end. Uh, I, I can't express enough to when you see the students at, at Tsinghua and, and Beida, you know, like openly in public in the middle of campus shouting out freedom and democracy. It is something that, that I do, would not have expected to have seen um, today. Um, but it uh, looks like things may be really changing. So we'll see. We'll keep track of this. Um, hope you guys understand everything and, and love to hear your thoughts on this as well. Um, and I do appreciate you watching. I'll catch you next video.